I'm Bob Chatterton with Trinic, and I'm here with Nick Morgan. And today we're going to discuss our GFRC premix and all the things that you can do with it out of one bag. So Nick, why don't you uh, run us through some of the things that we're going to show off today? So the basic finishes applications that most people are going to be doing are going to be either a spray up and then a hand pack with a backer or a sprayed backer and then there's SCC and ECC which are pretty similar to the same thing with just the difference being fiber. So for those of you that may not be familiar with the term spray up means we're actually going to spray what we call a face coat which goes on anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch sprayed through a hopper gun in our case here onto the form. It'll give a pretty uh, unique modern finish. There's different techniques that you can do with different spray techniques to make it um, achieve some different looks. But basically we're gonna do kind of a, a straight up spray coat, hand pack it, which literally means we're just packing that in place and then uh, SCC, which stands for self-consolidating concrete, because with our mix, we figured out a way uh, with the addition of plasticizer to our GFRC pre-mix, how you can pour it like normal concrete. Um, sometimes you'll spray a face coat just to make sure that fibers don't show, but that's not entirely necessary if you have a flat and shallow piece, but the piece we're doing today has some pretty good uprights on it, so there's no way that we could actually do that with a self-consolidating mix without putting twice the amount of labor into form work. So we're gonna kind of show you the easy way to do that and kind of combine the two. Um, we'll show all techniques on one piece today. All right, so now we're gonna talk about what's in the bag. So our GFRC pre-mix is pretty simple. Um, you can look up in, on our website and see the mix designs, and we're not pulling any punches, so it's 50% white federal cement, Q-Rock silica sand, uh, white silica fume, and our Tech 10 Ad Mix. That's what's in the bag, and to make it, your only thing you have to add is your choice of fiber, depending on which style of GFRC we're pouring, and water. So, <clears throat> one of the things that has been a frustration over the years is people changing out products, mostly sand and cement. Those are the two biggest ingredients. Those are the ones that vary the most. So in our pre-mix, we picked federal white cement because it's mined in one location. And it, that being a single source, it's fairly consistent. Not that it doesn't vary some, but that's up to us to do the QC on that. And the only thing that'll change is your water demand give or take a little bit here and there. The Q-Rock sand, we picked that one because it has relatively low water absorption. As a matter of fact, almost zero. It's a very hard graded quartzite sand and the water absorption or lack thereof is important because it won't crack. Um, the more the water absorbs into the sand, the higher your chances of shrinkage cracks. The Q-Rock does an excellent job of limiting that the silica fume, over the years, there's been a lot of people out there that said, we've tried silica fume, and that's a source of problems and cracking and things like that. Well, I bet it is if you don't pick the right one. It's very hard to find the proper silica fume. Kind of the key to what makes ours work is that it has a fairly high zirconium content to it, and it is bright white. We try and keep everything white, so your colors, if you choose to color it, are more true. So the key ingredient in our pre-mix is our Tech 10 Ad Mix. Years ago, we got frustrated dosing a bunch of different Ad Mixes into uh, GFRC, weighing each one out in small amounts and trying to get the right blend. So we came up with what is now known as Tech 10. It's an all powdered Ad Mix led off by the polymer that's in it is you can't make GFRC without a polymer. The polymer holds moisture in, so thin section concrete that we're creating actually cures at a proper rate instead of dries. The other thing that we incorporated into it are the properties of a defoamer, a shrinkage reducer, 
a little bit of a wetting agent that acts a little bit differently than a plasticizer does, kind of helps you mix your pigments in, but it also thoroughly wets out the mix so you get a complete saturation of the mix, which is also important back to the cracking or lack thereof issue. So we've taken basically everything that you need and all the chemicals that you need for uh, GFRC and made it into a powder, first of all, which saves on shipping if you're used to using liquid polymers, or if you live up here in the Great White North where we do, there's no freezing issues. So it ships cheaper and does, the pro does everything you really needed to do without having to source a bunch of different additives or chemicals. So, what do you say? Get so let's get to it. All of our admixes are powdered. So what you're gonna wanna do, to keep them in a powdered state, we put Deskin packs in there. So you wanna flip your bag upside down, cut it open, and the bag will be right there. Throw that out to the side. You don't need to put that in your mix. So now we're going to show you how to make your GFRC premix into an SCC. First things first, you want to mix it up. And if you're turning the GFRC premix, you add a half percent of plasticizer. You're going to be about six pounds of water per bag. I'm going to put most of that water in right off the bat. I'll hold back a little bit. And you'll hear the drill or the, the mixer kind of struggling a little bit. We want to have a little bit. We don't want to be overworking the drill, but we want to we want to get some good shear going. So that's why I hold a little bit of the water out. The water. Now, whenever you're mixing in warmer temps, you're going to want to put some ice in there. We put about 25% ice. I'm going to let this mix sit for about five minutes, give a chance for all that ice to melt, and we'll be ready to go. All right, once we've allowed our mix to sit and let that ice melt, let the sand suck up a little bit of water. Now, the sand we use is only about a quarter percent absorption, so there's very little absorption, very little fall set that takes place. Um, a lot of guys even skip the fall set, so it's kind of up to you. Um, if I'm using ice, I'm always going to let it fall set, just to let that melt. Um, now what we're putting in is 3% uh, of your solid, of your dry weight in uh, AR glass fibers. You can use three quarter inch, half inch. It's all personal preference. I've used them all. They don't, doesn't really make a huge difference to be honest. Um, the big thing is, and the reason uh, we get asked a lot why we don't put the fibers in the bag. And now the reason for that is <clears throat> if we mix these fibers up from the beginning, you can see they're in bundles. And if we break these bundles into little filaments, we lose all of our flexural strength. So it's very important that you put these in at the end of your mix. Um, these particular fibers, you really got to beat them up a lot. But really, the, the idea is we just want to get them mixed in. So anyway, here we go. I'll just dump them all in and I'll just gently mix those in. Now 
All right, so to pour, with your SEC, this being about the easiest uh, technique to do in the GFRC world, and this could be ECC just the same, I would just have to switch my fibers. So now, what you generally want to do is pour in a corner and try to keep your wet edge going. So I don't want to go beyond where I've already started. So basically I'm pouring wet on wet. And you can see that level off real nice. Trap air bubbles popping out of there. Want to see that? Just not in excess. We don't want foam. All right, now we're going to do our mist coat, uh, sprayed face coat. Uh, what we're looking to achieve here is enough fluid consistency to spray good out of the gun and get a good pattern um, and still stick to verticals. So we're gonna be anywhere from about seven and a half to eight, maybe a little over eight pounds of water to get the desired consistency. Deskin pack has already been removed. Make it easier for you guys to see, we're going to throw a little bit of pigment in here. And again, I want to put in most of my water, but not all of it. especially when you're spraying a face coat, to scrape your bucket to make sure you don't have any unmixed material on the edge. Stuff, let that sit, get our stuff ready to spray. Go. All right, so we broke up our fall set, now we're about ready to spray. Uh, with this particular gun, you're going to want to be somewhere around 25 to 30 psi. Gets a nice spray. And away we go. to get a perfect finish every time. Um, once you get a lot of experience with spraying, you could possibly skip this step, but we recommend brushing out your face coat. What that does is kind of compacts everything, gets all the air voids out, makes a little, your face coat a little bit denser. Nothing too crazy. I'm not getting carried away. I'm just one quick wipe everywhere. Pay a little extra attention to your edges. Corners. Now we're ready to spray a little more on there. All 
All right, so now once you've brushed everything out, uh, you shouldn't have to wait. You're, it should set relatively quick. What you want to do now is cover up all your brush marks and try to get to where your face coat's around an eighth inch to three sixteenths. More like three sixteenths. We shoot for a little thicker if we can. All right, so now the next part on this piece, we're going to actually show you the SCC back coat. And what we're actually going to do is do an SCC back coat on the face, then we'll show you hand packing on one side and then actually spraying a back coat on the other. This being the easiest. Lay it on there kind of gently so you don't blow through your face coat. So another thing, if you want to SCC this whole piece, we're just doing this for demonstration purposes, but you could actually just block all that out and just pour the whole thing SCC, which would be about the easiest way of doing it. But that's it for that portion. All right, so now we got a fun little toy that we uh, have been playing around with here. This is a Rimcraft back hopper. We're gonna use this today to spray our backer coat. This will spray a face coat too, but we're still getting used to it. So for now we're doing the backer with it. Um, if you've ever hand packed before, you'll like this. a couple times and we got uh, our full thickness. All right, so now we're gonna show you the hand pack method. Um, you know, if you, it's not in your budget to get a pack or gun, then uh, this is what you're left with. And, uh, you know, some practice, it's not too bad. Uh, to start out, what I wanna do is get a kind of a thin thin coat and really get a little bit of pressure on there so I'm getting a good bond.
as you see, just uh, keep building it up from there. Another trick is if you pull it up over your edge, it'll help it stay without falling down. All right, so next up, uh, we're gonna do some ECC, and this will be a portable ECC. Um, if you're doing countertops, port in place or something, you could probably go with skipping the plasticizer and just make it a little bit more of a, I don't know, oatmeal consistency. But what we're doing is a portable. Starting with the good old GFRC remix. Plasticizer and fiber. All right, so now I've let this ice melt a little bit. Let the, this thing's really a low absorption. Honestly, if we're not running ice, we'll even skip fall sets just because we don't, the, the sand doesn't absorb much water. Um, and one thing I will point out, uh, you notice I put the fiber in at the beginning. Now, the reason for that is this is more of a dispersing fiber. We aren't using the bundled fibers on this. So if you're using a dispersing fiber, you want it in at the beginning of your mix using a bundled fiber, you want to put it in right at the end and just mix it in enough so the fibers are all coated and evenly mixed throughout. So without further ado, Nice flowable mix. And there you have portable at ECC. We've showed you how to take our GFRC premix and by simply adding water to it, do a spray up face coat. And then we added fiber to do both a hand placed back coat as well as a sprayed back coat. And then by adding our plasticizer to it, we showed you how to do an SCC. And by switching our fibers from AR glass to PVA, we made an ECC mix. So we hope that this was helpful to you guys to see how with one simple product,
product, you can pretty much do the different techniques that it takes to make decorative concrete, furniture, fireplace, surrounds, wall panels, building cladding, whatever your heart's desire. For any uh, questions on anything, feel free to contact Trinic. Check out our website. Uh, a lot of helpful mixed designs and everything that you can make right on the website. And uh, we're glad to help you if you need help.